Hi, my lovely students. Um, nice to see you. It's week eight. Um, we're starting May 19 through the 23rd, I believe it is. Um, so we're in the final stretch. This is close to the end. Um, I want to remind you guys to please make sure that you turn in all of your work. If you if if you haven't completed it and you still want to complete it, um, if you want to do a second try on a quiz or anything like that, let me know. I'm very flexible. I'm taking all of your late work. Just make sure that you do it this week because next week your your grades are going to be finalized. So I want to make sure that all of the grade book is correct and if it is not, please let me know as well. So if you've turned something in late, maybe I didn't get around to grading it or I didn't see that you turned it in on Canvas, make sure that you send me an email and let me know. If you did turn something in late and you're doing it now, that's fine. There's no late grade, that's, that's fine with me, but make sure that you email me so that I know to look up your, um, your assignment so that I can grade it and go ahead and put it in the grade book. So that is my announcement for this week. I'm gonna go ahead and share the screen. We're gonna be talking about the value of biodiversity and what this means and why we need to study this. And you're going to do a short assignment, but um, this will probably be one of the last assignments for the quarter. So take your time on it and complete it to the best of your abilities. All right, so we're going to talk about, you know, what an endangered species is, what a um, keystone animal or a keystone species is, and extinct and all that, and why do we name them these certain things. So at the end of this, I'm going to show you your assignment. Your assignment can be downloaded on Canvas as well in PDF form and filled out, turned in like that as well. So it's okay if you don't want to um, open up the PowerPoint and go through it and whatnot. It's okay. I'm going to explain the assignment anyways here so that you have um, three ways of getting that assignment done. All right, so first and foremost, keystone animal. A keystone animal or keystone species is an animal that without it, that particular ecosystem would fail. And so a keystone species is an organism that helps define an entire ecosystem. By this species, we define the ecosystem. So for example, alligators in Florida are defining the ecosystem of the Everglades. And so um, that particular species is a keystone species in Florida in the Everglades. Without its keystone species, the ecosystem would be dramatically different or cease to exist altogether. So keystone species have a low functional redundancy. So they're very, very important for that particular ecosystem. So we call them the keystone animals. Um, over here in the link in green is a YouTube video that you can watch about keystone animals. Um, super cool video. If you wanted more examples, for example, the starfish, we have um, the wolf, the sea otters, and other keystone species there as well in the picture. Okay. All right, invasive species. This is something we've been talking about since the beginning of this quarter and this unit. So invasive species, we've been talking about them here in Florida. We have the iguana, the lionfish, the Burmese python. We have these snails, um, the toad, the cane toad. Some of you have done your projects on either one of these animals, and I've seen a lot of these animals come up in our um, graded work. So good job. Now, invasive species is a species um, or it's indicative that any kind of living organism, an amphibian like the cane toad, plant, insect, fish, fungus, bacteria, or even an organism's seed or eggs that is not native to that ecosystem and then causes harm or disruption in that particular ecosystem where it's interrupted and in, introduced. They can harm the environment, the economy, or even human health. So these African snails were harming people's health lionfish, 
are harming our um, ecosystem, our aquatic ecosystems, marine ecosystem, because they eat things that, um, that that are not meant for them, so they stay alive, but then there's nothing that eats the particular lionfish, and so the lionfish will continue to multiply without being eaten. Burmese python, the same thing. Iguanas um, were also invasive, and they eat a lot of the shrubs and plants that are important in our ecosystem, so they are also disrupting the ecosystem. All right, so indicator species. An indicator species or a bioindicator is any species or group of species whose function, population, or status can reveal the qualitative um, status of an environment. So we can tell how well the environment is doing or how terrible or how terrible the environment is doing depending on the species that um, are alive and doing well in that environment. So for example, copepods and other small water crustaceans that are present in many water bodies can be monitored for changes that may indicate a problem within their ecosystem. So if we have a really um, dramatic drop in copepods in aquatic, aquatic systems, we're going to know that the aquatic system ecosystem is not doing well in that area and then someone you know needs to step in and test that water and make sure that we're doing whatever we can so these are some examples of indicator species we will have worms come up so tur turflex worms if the population is high um, or the pollution level is very high we will have those worms um, the louse, the freshwater shrimp. Um, so as pollution levels increase, we will see that some of these animals will then appear. All right, um, let me put myself over here. All right, an endangered species. So we have endangered and we have threatened species. So an endangered species is a species that is very likely to become extinct in the near future, either worldwide or in a particular political jurisdiction. Um, endangered species may be at risk due to factors such as habitat loss, poaching, or and invasive species also. So pandas, for example, are endangered species. Tigers are also endangered. Um, after watching a documentary recently, I realized that we actually have more tigers in captivity than we do in the wild, so that's really sad. Um, elephants are endangered, manatees are endangered, so uh, the bald eagle is also endangered. So some of these are endangered because of their habitat. habitat. So if their habitat, if they've lost their habitat or their natural habitat, um, poaching means that they're hunting or using them for fur or, um, for example, the elephant using their ivory, their tusks. Um, so poaching is a big deal as well. The cheetah is also endangered. All right, um, threatened species. So threatened species are any species which are vulnerable to endangerment. So they're not endangered yet, but they are close or near to be in the endangered category, um, meaning there will be endangerment in the near future. So species that are threatened or are sometimes characterized by a math mathematical measure of biomass related to population growth rate. So um, pangolins, for example, the pangolin is right under the tiger. That is a threatened species. So Close to, very close to being endangered. The rhino is also very close to being in the endangered category. All right, extinct species. So some extinct species are listed here in this category. You're gonna see dinosaurs, woolly mammoth, um, the passenger pigeon, the a ground sloth, the golden toad, the dodo, the saber-toothed tiger, the Tasmanian tiger. And these are extinct animals. So extinction happens when 
every single organism of that species or belonging to that species has now um, no longer existing. So extinction is the termination of a kind of organism or of a group of kinds, usually a species. The moment of extinction is generally considered to be the death of the last individual. However, they could have lost their capacity to breed and recover long before extinction actually happened. So remember, in order to be a species, you have to be able to breed within that species. And in order to survive, you also have to be able to reproduce. And so this situation, um, extinction, really happens way before even the last animal of its kind dies. All right, so your assignment. Your assignment is to imagine that, so we're measuring the value of biodiversity and you're gonna imagine that um, $30 million will be put towards a conservation of invasive keystone indicator species, extinct and endangered and threatened species. So um, I want you to allocate those $30 million to certain species. So decide which species will benefit from your investments. Then you're gonna choose 10 different species and at least, at least one of them from each category. So one of them has to be endangered, one of them has to be extinct, indicator, invasive, keystone, and threatened. So you're gonna pick 10 animals in total, but at least one from each category. Um, one must be native to your home state. So either to Florida or wherever you were born. One of them must be native to the US, so different state than number four. So different state than number three, I'm sorry. So you're going to, let's say we pick Florida because I was born and raised here in Florida. That's my home state. One animal has to come from Florida. Another animal has to come from the US and one of the animals has to be global and one organism has to be a plant. Okay, so you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, because you have to pick one of each category. So one in danger, extinct, indicator, invasive, keystone, and threatened. Then you have to pick one from Florida, one from another state from the US, one that is global, and one that is a plant. Okay, so in total, 10 animals. And I'm gonna show you the chart in which you're going to organize this um, you can also print it off of Canvas, and there's a chart there. You can fill it out with your um, pen or pencil, take a picture, and then turn it in if you'd like. So you're going to list them in order from highest amount to, to lowest amount. So let's say your global animal is the panda, and you really, really have deep-hearted feelings for this panda. You're going to put panda at number one, and you're going to give the panda... $10 million for conservation, okay? Um, you're probably not going to spend the same amount of money on all species, so decide how much money will be spent on each one of your species. Remember, you have 10 and you have $30 million. So you're gonna allocate those $30 million to those 10 species. Um, so you have to think about this. Is it gonna go to buying them native habitats? Um, or turning something into a preserve, will the remaining individuals be collected from the wild and put in a zoo or a botanical garden for captive breeding? Will the money go towards collecting fungal specimens from all around the world um, to do cancer research? Would you start a biodiversity garden project at schools? in your community or collect species locally? Do you have other ideas about how you will spend that money to preserve biodiversity? And then you're gonna write a justification for each of your expenses. So if you're planning to spend um, $10 million on the conservation of pandas, 
and the way that you're going to conserve them is by um, education in a school system about the panda and then conserving their habitat and you're going to spend all that money in that why is that important or how you're going to spend your money and why is that species so important to spending that money is that species a keystone species for a particular community or a particular ecosystem okay so here is your chart and this is basically what you will fill out so you're going to have let's say your panda is number one so you're going to write panda um amount of money that you're going to spend on this panda 10 million dollars how will the money be spent i'm going to spend it by um education in the school system and conserving their habitat building them um, places where they want where they would live or whatnot and why did you spend that money on that species well that species particularly is a keystone species in this ecosystem very important to conserve this animal All right so that's it um, for this week that's that's the assignment that you're going to be completing this week um, if you have any questions, remember I am on Zoom from Monday through Friday this week. So I will not have any days off. So Monday through Friday, 11 to 12.30, okay? So Monday through Friday, 11 to 12.30, I'm Zoom. Make sure you complete all your assignments this week. Um, this will technically be the last week of assignments for grades. And so... I believe it is. I won't make that statement for sure, but you can come visit me on Zoom and I can discuss that with you. But in any case, um, make sure you turn in all of your assignments, whether late or you want to redo something, let me know so that you can do that. Um, anything is better than a zero. All right, guys, have a great week. Love you. See you later and hope everyone's doing great.